Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be integrating x times the sine of x over x squared plus 1 over the real numbers. So, we're going to be using Laplace transforms to do this because they're just they're so cool to work with. But uh, yeah, let's just jump straight into it, I guess. So, I already called this integral here i, just so we know what we're solving later on. So, yeah, let's just take a look at this integrand here. So, we have three distinct functions. We have an x, we have a sine of x, and an x squared plus 1 on the denominator. So, x is an odd function, sine is an, also an odd function, and whenever you have an odd function times another odd function, that's just an even function. And we have an x squared, which is an even function, uh, plus 1, still an even function. So all in all, we have an even integrand. And notice that we are integrating across symmetrical bounds as well. So we can use that even function identity, which basically splits the interval integrating across in half. So from 0 to infinity now. And we have to multiply everything by 2. And we still have the same integrands here. So x times sine of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And as I said before, we're going to be using Laplace transforms to do this. So ideally, we want to introduce some new time-dependent variable. So we're going to introduce some new functions, and let's call it f of t. And that's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of x times the sine of t times x. So I'm putting the, uh, the new variable t here over x squared plus 1 dx. And you may ask, how is this thing the same as our original i that we wanted to find? Well, notice if we put plug 1 into here, well, that's just going to turn the sine of t times x into just a sine of x. And that's almost the same because these two integrals are the same, but we're off by this factor of 2. So what I can write, um, I'll just write it over here. Our i is the same as 2 times f evaluated at 1. So you can confirm that for yourself if you plug 1 into this function here. Um, you're going to get uh, the same integral and multiplying everything by 2, you're going to get, uh, you're going to arrive at this i here. So we're going to need this uh, later on when we uh, finish off the integration. But uh, yeah, so now we can finally take the Laplace transform of our new function here. So let's just go ahead and do that. So. Laplace transform of our f of t. That's just the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t times e to the minus st dt. And that's just pretty much the definition of the Laplace transform. So now we can substitute our f of t, which is the integral, into here. So that's now double integral from 0 to infinity of x sine of t times x over x squared plus 1 dx. So this part here is our f of t, and we still have e to the minus st dt. All right, so now what can we do? Notice that we have an e to the minus st here, and that's actually just a constant um, in the, with respect to x. So what we can do is pull this guy here into this x integral. So what we're gonna end up with is integral from zero to infinity, another integral from zero to infinity of x sine of t times x over x squared plus 1 e to the minus st dx dt and without any restrictions i'm just going to interchange these two um these two integrals so just interchanging these um dx's and dt's pretty much so we're going to have dt and dx and that won't affect these bounds here because they're exactly the same so we can just leave it how it is so now this inside integral is with respect to t. So that means that all the x's are constant. So we'll just put in a new, new line here. So that's just the integral from zero to infinity. What I'm gonna do is bring out all these x terms. So we're gonna have x over x squared plus one. This outside here is, res this outside integral is with respect to x. So everything's still contained inside. Then we have the t integral from zero to infinity of sine of t times x e to the minus st dt dx and you may notice that this thing here is exactly the laplace transform of sine of t times x so what we're going to have now is the integral from zero to infinity x over x squared plus one laplace transform of sine of t times x dx 
And just a note here, you have to be careful here because this Laplace transform is res with respect to T, not X. X is just a constant inside this Laplace transform here. So if you know the Laplace transform of sine, where's my red marker? So I'll just write it down here. Laplace transform of some sine of a t, where a is just a constant, that's just a over s squared plus a squared. So let's uh, use this and plug it into here. So what we end up with now is the integral from 0 to infinity of x over x squared plus 1. And then the Laplace transform of this thing here just becomes, well, we're just going to replace the a's with the x's pretty much. Um, so we're going to have x over s squared plus x squared dx. And what we can do now is just combine the fractions pretty much. So you have the integral from 0 to infinity x squared over x squared plus 1, x squared plus s squared dx. So that's what we have now. So what we're going to do now is do partial fraction decomposition. So we're going to do partial fraction decomposition on x squared over x squared plus 1 times x squared plus s squared. Alright, so we can uh, break this up into two fractions. So this just becomes, we want it to become some ax plus b over the first factor plus cx plus d over the second factor. Alright, and now we can cross multiply. So this denominator times this numerator and this denominator times this numerator. So we have our x squared here is equal to x squared plus 1 and then now we can just expand everything out so x squared is plus d all right so we've expanded out everything so notice i've just kind of lined everything up so this row here or this column is the cubic and this uh, this column here is the linear terms this is the uh, quadratics and this is the constants and we have only um, a polynomial of degree 2 here. So this is 1 times x squared. That means our x squared column has to add up to 1. So the coefficients, um, I'll just write here, b plus d has to be 1. And uh, everything else has to be 0. So you have no cubic terms on the left hand side. So that means a plus c is 0. Uh, and we have no linear terms. So a s squared plus c equals 0 and no constants so um, b s squared uh, plus d is 0 so now I can just simply solve the system of equations so let's just start off with this we can subtract um, this this equation from the top one so subtracting the d's will cancel and we have 1 is equal to uh, b minus b s squared but I'm going to factor out the b so we're going to have v 1 minus s squared equals to 1 so that means that our b is equal to 1 over 1 minus s word and because b plus d equals to 1 that means our d is equal to 1 minus b so that means our d is 1 minus 1 over 1 minus s word that's our b here and we can get everything on the common denominator so multiplying that one we had before by 1 minus s squared or minus, one, minus s squared and now we can combine these two fractions so we have a big fraction 1 minus s squared these ones will cancel so our d just becomes negative s squared over 1 minus s squared all right and now for our a and c here well if we subtract these two equations these will cancel we have a i'm going to factor it out like four a 1 minus s squared equals to zero so that means a equals to zero and if you plug zero in back into here well that means c equals to zero all right so now we have all our solutions just won't rush through that quickly uh so we can just get it over and done with because partial fractions is boring all right so our partial fractions in the end turns out to be well a is just at zero so that kills off this thing c is also zero so we just have our b left so one over one minus s squared over x squared plus 1 and then our d is negative s squared over 1 minus s squared so we have minus 
S squared over 1 minus S squared over X squared plus S squared. Alright, and now we uh, remember we had to integrate that thing from 0 to infinity. And because this fraction here is the same as those two fractions we just found here, integrating this one from 0 to infinity is exactly the same as integrating this one from 0 to infinity. So I'll just go over that, th that quickly. So we have now the integral from 0 to infinity of this thing. So now if, just, if you just take a quick look at this, these are just two arctangent integrals. Uh, this is just a constant, so it will just uh, jump out the front. So what we end up with is 1 over s squared, and then the arctangent integral, so arctangent of x from 0 to infinity, then much the same here, so 1 uh, negative s squared over 1 minus s squared, then here we have to use that arctangent identity thing, so we have an s squared here, so that just becomes 1 over s, arctangent of x over s from 0 to infinity. Alright, and if we pl uh, plug these bounds into each of these arc tangents, we're just going to get pi on 2. So this is the same as 1 over 1 minus s squared times pi on 2 minus, and then we have s and s squared here, so some stuff will cancel. So we have 1, uh, sorry, s over 1 minus s squared times pi on 2. And we can factor out this pi on 2, so we end up with pi over 2. And then factoring that, we get on the inside 1 over 1 minus s squared minus s over 1 minus s squared. Alright, and now we can just combine these those two fractions because they have the same denominator. So we have pi over 2 times 1 minus s over 1 minus s squared. And you may notice the denominator is just a difference of two squares. So we can just factor that out a bit. So you have 1 minus s over 1 minus s, then 1 plus s. And you may notice that this 1 minus s and this 1 minus s will cancel. And I'll just write it over here. So we will end up with pi on 2 times uh, 1 over 1 plus s. Alright, so that's pretty much our solution to the, Lapla the Laplace transform of our original f, so I'll just note that using this notation. So now after we've done that, what we have to do is take the inverse Laplace transform of this whole thing here um, to get back to our original integral. So our Laplace transform in the end was just pi on 2 times 1 over 1 plus s, so that means our f of t is the inverse Laplace transform of this thing here. And what we can do is bring out this pi on 2 constant to the outside, so we have pi on 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over 1 plus s. And if you know your Laplace transform table, you know that um, Laplace transform of e to the 80 turns into 1 over s minus a. So we kind of have um, our function in this form right here. So if we just switch the s and the 1 around, so we have s plus 1. So if we just multiply this a by negative 1, we're going to flip the signs. And if we substitute a for 1, so we're just going to get inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 is the same as e to the negative t. So what this turns out to be is just pi over 2 times e to the minus t. And that's just the same as pi over 2 e to the t. Alright, so remember our little um, equation we had at the start that our original i is nothing but 2 times our f evaluated at 1. I'll just write it here. This is our original f here. So if we plug 1 into this function here and multiply it by 2, um, that's just going to get us our i. So our i in the end is just 2 times pi over 2 e to the first power. And that, well, the 2s will cancel first of all. And then we have pi over e to the first power, which is just pi over e. So that is 
our answer to our original integral that we wanted to find. So let's just rub out all this junk here. So our integral in the end is pi over e. So there we go.